Hey everybody, welcome. Andrew Ainsworth Golf Academy. As always, a warm welcome. Thanks for tuning in, watching the video today. You're very welcome. Quick advertisement break as normal. If you're new to the channel, first time watching one of my videos, thanks for watching. Maybe consider hitting that subscribe button down the bottom. And while you're down there, give it a little thumbs up. That would be great. So I've been waiting to hit this new Mizuno STZ driver for ages and ages. Um, it should have been launched back in January like a lot of products should be, but due to COVID and all the rest of it, they delayed the launch. Um, just some fitting kit arrived the other day, so I thought I'd jump in today and, and have a hit with this. I've obviously probably like you people watching my video, I've watched some reviews from other YouTubers like Mark Crossfield and Rick Shields and lots of other people. And all of them that I've watched, unless I've missed a few, have said really positive things about this driver. It's very interesting just to look at how Mizuno have fared over the years with, with um, drivers. They've always been known as making some of the best irons in the business. And I'm a Mizuno custom fitter and I do lots of Mizuno irons, famous for their blades and muscle backs and forged irons, but they also make heel and toe, you know, cavity back clubs as well, but never really cracked the wood market. They have made some fantastic drivers down the years, really good drivers. And I think it was Mark Crossfield who said in one of his videos, and his tagline was probably the best driver you'll never buy. And unfortunately, that's kind of what Mizuno are up against, you know, the, trying to break in against the TaylorMades, the Callaways, the Pings, and all the other big boys, Titleists and Cobras out there. He's very difficult. But you're going to see in a minute that this driver here is pretty good. In fact, it's more than good. It's fantastic. You're going to see some performance here, which I didn't expect from it. Looks-wise, I'm going to show you some little videos that I've taken. It's absolutely stunning to look at. We've got this carbon crown going into the titanium frame. It's very, very beautiful, sexy looking golf club. Glossy finish to it. Minimal sort of logos, the little runbird logo on the top here. Not too fussy, but it just looks very, very attractive to look at. As you'd expect with Mizuno, lots and lots of shaft options. I've got this today fitted with the Hazardous RDX Smoke. It's a 6.0, 60 gram shaft. Um, we're fitted with the Lamkin um, Hybrid, ST Hybrid Grip. Is it called an ST Hybrid? Yeah, which feels really, really nice. 45 inches long, which is my preferred length of driver. I've got this at nine and a half degrees. I'm not going to talk too much about tech today. I'm just going to briefly touch on it. If you want to find out all the spec, jump on their website. So this is all straight off the Mizuno webpage. Ultra stable with lower spin efficiency, the STZ. Remember, we've also got the STX, which we'll do a separate review on. A balanced toe heel carbon composite construction, deep central back weighting for spin efficient straight line ball flight. Built on the second generation of Mizuno's Forge SAT2041 Beta Tie Face. <laughs> it's a mouthful. For potent, and potent ball speeds and consistent performance. As I said, lots of stuff you can find out about. Very interesting. But the, the bottom line with this is they've tried to build a very low spinning driver, which will go a long way. And uh, boy, oh boy, have they done that. Let's tell you about the price straight away. Um, price is... It still intrigues me that nobody really talks about price on YouTube. Nobody says, you know, you can go and buy one of these for X. It's almost like taboo, isn't it? These are going to be sold for £349, which is great value for money when you consider pings up at £399. You've got your Titleists at whatever they are, 450 and I don't know. You've got your tailor-made Sim 2s at 399 So certainly punching the, you know, for their weight price wise, that's for sure. The big problem Mizuno are gonna have with this driver, like a lot of manufacturers are gonna have is supply. What happens is I'll get an initial allocation of drivers, however many that might be. And once those are sold out, I think I'm gonna to struggle to get some more. 
So we could see again a very hot product here which just sells out and we're gonna to struggle to get more. Now that's not just Mizuno who are struggling for supply, that's right across the golf industry. There are problems with components and getting out enough. We're gonna have this massive boom in April um, when golf courses reopen. Well, they actually open on the 29th of March, golf shops open on the 12th of April, and it's gonna go nuts. There's gonna be a huge bounce back. So there will be supply. So my top tip with this driver, if you do fancy one of the Mizuno drivers, I'd buy it quick because they ain't gonna be around for long. Let's go and hit one. Ball of choice today has to be a Mizuno golf ball. Again, fairly unknown quantities in a lot of people's minds. Mizuno golf balls, really good. I've got the new RB566 golf ball here. Performance is unbelievable, and I retail these at £20 a dozen. And I think for £20 a dozen, this ball really does perform. So, quick word about the sound. They've worked very hard, the Mizuno engineers, on the acoustics of this club. And it's got a really nice, dull sound to it. Not noisy at all. It'll sound quite noisy in my uh, concrete room that I, uh, I'm based in here. Big echo in here but it has got a great feel. Behind the ball, it just looks fantastic. Look at that. That just felt so solid off the club face. It's a center strike by the looks of it. <clears throat> the noise coming back off it. I'm sure you're picking it up as well as I am there. Again, <clears throat> that wasn't my Sunday best hit. That was uh, 102 for, for club speed, 144 ball speed. 235 carry, <coughs> excuse me, predicted run out 277, but look at the backspin, 1734. I can do better than that. In warm-up, I was getting these carry distances consistently up around about 245.1, which you'll see a bit later, which is a bit longer than that, but I'll certainly take the last shot. Well, that was better. That was better. Here's the carry line. That line there where that ball's pitched is around about a 250 carry. Look at the yardage coming up, <clears throat> top left-hand corner. There we go. So again, this just proves the theory about strike location. Strike is a lot to do with how you're gonna get the ball to go further, folks. That one was a mid-center strike. It was no faster than the last one but I got the perfect launch conditions there. I've got a 13 and a half degree launch, spinning at 1900, ball speed of only 144, but look at the carry, 250 through the air, predicted run out of 288. This is a driver which performs as good, if not better, than a lot of its competitors. And I, I don't make these statements lightly. It's just ticking all the boxes. It really is. Again, solid, solid strike. Carry's gonna be similar. Another one dropping in at around that 250 mark. And the other thing to say about this driver is it's not hard to hit. You know, it's not one of these clubs which you do have to hit bang out the middle. You can get away with a little misstrike. Look at that. That's an absolute missile for me. Again, ball speed, 147, 249 carry spin at just over 2,000 center strike. This is a brilliant driver. I'll hit one more. Just leaked that one a little bit, just left the club face open. It's not gonna be in too much trouble. It really isn't, it would probably, might hang on to right edge of the fairway or first cut. How far right center was that? 22 yards, so yeah, should be picking up sort of second, first cut at least. Let's just zoom in a little bit for you and we'll talk about some of these numbers. So have a quick peek at these numbers and then we'll mark this um, up against some of the other drivers that I've reviewed this year and we'll give it a mark out of 30. Um, it's gonna be marked on appearance, playability and value for money. We'll be right back on that one. So club head speeds and ball speeds were pretty consistent across the test there. It's only four shots have hit and I, I'm mindful that 
this is a, just a snapshot. Really, you know, to get an in-depth test on this, you need to do something where you might hit 100 or 50 shots and blah, blah, blah. Um, my, <laughs> my videos are not that in-depth, but I just hope they give you a little bit of an insight as to how they perform. And it's certainly, I think these shots here are pretty indicative of, of how I hit the golf ball. So they're, they're good numbers for me. Um, club speed 103, ball speed of 146. Average launch there at 11.4. The spin rate is very impressive indeed. Look at these spin numbers. Average spin is um, under 2,000, 19, 1982, I think there's a 1902, but it's definitely under 2,000. Average carry distance, I had a, the shortest was 235 carry, the longest was 250. 250 carry for me with my club speeds about the maximum I can get to. Predicted runouts there are fantastic. So I've got one little clip to show you of a, of a special driver. A couple of offline ones here. That was that was a sort of a pull draw, and that was a little push. Um, that's operator error, as they say, isn't it? But overall, a very impressive driver. Let's give this club some marks, shall we? Okay. Let's go on appearance first. I love an appearance is always going to be subjective, isn't it? What I like, you might hate. I love this. It's either a nine or a ten for me. I don't. Know. I've only been doing these sort of marks for a little while. I'm giving it 10. I, c I can't fault the looks of it. There's nothing on that club I don't like. Playability, it's as good as anything I've hit so far. Um, it's not difficult to hit. I'm going to give it a 9 for playability. And value for money at 249. 50 to 100 pounds cheaper than anything else on the market and performs like this. Got to be a 10, hasn't it? So highest marks I've given so far, um, a 10, a 9, and a 10. To tot them all up, put them down there. It's going to be hard to beat. This is, I keep banging on about it, this is an impressive driver. I'm so impressed with it. Go and hit one. Go and put it up against anything else. I'll be very surprised if it doesn't perform for you. As I said in the video earlier, Lots and lots of shaft options. Mizuno are custom fit specialists. There are some top notch shafts in here. You name them, you can probably get fitted for them. Before I go, look at this last little video clip which I'm about to play now for you. So when I was doing a little bit of warm up earlier, I got this shot which I've saved. I just want to show it to you. The strike was a little bit high on the club face and he got one of these knuckleball shots. Watch the carry distance coming up in the top left hand corner, sorry, the, the overall distance coming up. So it's a 300 yard overall, got a 252 carry. A 300 yard drive for me, with run, obviously that's, that's a big hit. Not often I get that, and this is on a completely flat surface. There's, it's not uphill or downhill, there's no wind on. This is very sterile test conditions. Hey, thanks for watching the video. It's the Mizuno STZ driver. It's impressive, it's the best driver I've hit this year. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Bye for now.